Hi, and welcome to our fourth lesson in the quadratic functions unit. This is probably the most important lesson in this unit. We'll be completing the square in a variety of units throughout this course. So it's very important that you learn how to do this. Okay, um, we're going to go at it slowly. The first page is just a bit of review and pattern recognition. Um, question one's done for you. Um, let's have a look at question two. So we got x plus 5 squared is the same as x plus 5 times x plus 5. And now we just have to make sure that we multiply everything from the first set of brackets into the second one. So x times x, x squared, x times 5, 5x, five, 5 times x, 5x, five, and 5 times 5 is 25. So that's going to give us x squared plus 10x plus 25. All right, I recommend you now pause the video as I'm going to and you work your way through these. Um, hopefully by the end of it you should be able to go straight from the question to the answer without this middle step stuff here. You should be able to go straight from the question to the final answer. Okay, here are the answers. Um, let's just talk about how to go straight from the beginning to the end and we'll go back to the question I did up here number two. So this was five. So notice that because this was five I end up with five x plus five x so that'll be twice as much as five is ten x and then on this guy here I end up with five times five is twenty five. So the middle number is always going to be twice as much as this and the last number is always going to be our five squared. So for example in number six here I go from negative 4, double it, I get to negative 8. Negative 4 times negative 4 gives me 16. Okay, using that knowledge, I'd like you to fill in the blanks at the bottom using that pattern. And again, I'm going to pause it, fill it in so you can have a look at my answers. All right, here are my answers. Um, let's just have a look at number 14 here. Um, notice that I figured out that this was negative 5 because it's half of negative 10 using the pattern and then this is going to be plus 25 because it's going to be negative 5 times negative 5. Alright, now we can um, basically convert from an equation that looks like this that really doesn't tell us anything to an equation like this that we can easily read the vertex off of. Okay, so let's have a look at the first one here. And hopefully you'll notice that this was the answer to question two on the first page, which means that it is x plus five squared. Piece of cake. And if we really want to, we can put a plus zero on here because there isn't anything else. It's just x plus five squared is x squared plus 10x plus 25. Okay, good way to make sure that you did these right. Find the vertex make sure it makes our original equation true. So in this case our vertex is going to happen at 0 squared, same as usual. So our vertex is going to be at negative 5, 0. So let's throw that into our original equation. Perfect. So it also makes that true. Right, so the logic here is that obviously the vertex is going to make our rearranged version true. And if these are actually equivalent, then it should also make the original true. So that's why that vertex check works. Okay, let's have a look at question two. Again, this, we know from question two on the first page, is just x plus five squared. And now we've got an extra plus 3 on the outside, so we'll just put it there. Our vertex is going to happen at 0 squared, so that's going to be negative 5, 3. And let's fire that into our original. So 3 equals... Oops, that's a minus.
And again, that gives us 3 equals 3 is true. All right, so now notice that plus 28 is the same as plus 25 plus 3. So we're just going to have the exact same answer as last time. So the trick is now, how can I see that 28 is actually 25 plus 3, which is what we need it to equal if we're going to be able to get this first part with a 3 left over. Okay, and I'm not going to bother doing the check because it's exactly the same as question 2. And here is how we figure that out. Okay, so best way to do it, so in this case we know we're going to have to break that 8 up, we just don't know how. Okay, so if I rewrite it like this in step 1, then in step 2 I'm going to add and subtract what I need to complete the square. So I know that because this is a 6 here, this is going to have to be x plus 3 squared. If this is plus 3, I'm going to have to have a plus 9 there. Now these two highlighted things are the same. But unfortunately, I've unbalanced the right side of my equation. Normally we'd add a 9 over here, but we want to keep that as just as y by itself. So another way we can balance that equation is take our advice here and add and subtract. So I got plus 9 here to make the yellow parts the same, so I'm just going to minus 9 now to balance out my equation. So I have a negative 9 plus 8 left on the outside, minus 1. Okay, let's find our vertex. It's going to be negative 3, negative 1, because that's when we have 0 squared. Let's fire that into our original. And we get negative 1 equals negative 1. So that's a good, good check to see that we have two equivalent expressions. The x's and y's that make this true are the same as the x's and y's that make that true, or at least probably are. We've checked one. Chances are they all are, if we've done everything right. Now question 5. Let's look at following the same steps. So I'm going to rewrite my equation as x squared plus 8x, leave a space, plus 19, and I know I want that to look like x plus 4 all squared, because 4 is half of 8, 4 squared is 16, now the highlighted pieces are the same, I subtract 16 over here to balance things out, so this is plus 3. That means my vertex is going to be negative 4. Oops. Negative 4 gives me 0 squared. And that leaves me with y equals 3. Throw it into our original. And that's true. Okay, question six, same thing. We have a space. We want that to be minus three because that's half of negative six. And then negative three squared is nine. Balance it out with a minus nine. So I've got minus two on the outside. So my vertex is going to be 3, negative 2, because 3 gives us 0 squared.
and true. 7, when you look at it, feels really different. But we can make it exactly the same as what we're used to seeing. So we leave our big space, and then we can just go plus 0. Then it feels exactly the same as the other questions, even though there wasn't a 0 there to start with. So this is going to be x minus 1 squared plus 1, so that the yellow pieces are the same. Minus 1 to balance things out. So our vertex is going to be 1, negative 1. Throw that into the equation, our original, to make sure that it also makes our original true. is true. All right, so let's have a look at question 8 here. It asks us to work in fractions so that we know how to do that when we hit question, or units 2 and 7. So again, let's start out the same. y equals x squared minus 3x. Leave a space, plus 1. So y is going to have to equal x, so half of negative 3 is going to be, oops, I don't need to write that negative twice, minus 3 over 2 squared. And now we need 3 over 2 times 3 over 2, negative actually, and that'll give me 9 over 4. So I need to go plus 9 over 4, minus 9 over 4. So now left over, we're going to have negative 9 over 4 plus 1. And instead of 1, I can write 4 over 4. So that's going to give me negative 5 over 4. So I'll have minus 5 over 4 here. So my vertex, to get 0 squared, I'll have to have x equals 3 over 2. And y is negative 5 over 4. Okay, and let's fire that into our original as a quick check. So 3 over 2 times 3 over 2 is going to be 9 over 4. Negative 3 is the same as negative 3 over 1, so that's going to be minus 9 over 2, and then plus 1. Looks like we're going to need a common denominator of 4, so that's going to give us negative 5 over 4 equals 9 over 4, minus 18 over 4, because we needed to multiply top and bottom there by 2, and 1 is the same as 4 over 4. So we've got 9 minus 18 plus 4 is negative 5. So we're good. Okay, so now for that parabola, we're going to have to answer these questions. So just to do a really rough sketch here. Oops, that's going to be positive 3 over 2 there. Actually, this isn't really to scale. That's okay negative 5 over 4 there. So there's a rough idea of what our parabola looks like. So our axis of symmetry is going to be at x equals 3 over 2 domain. x can be anything. Range, y is going to have to be greater than or equal to negative 5 over 4. And we've got the bottom of a valley, so that's a minimum of y equals negative 5 over 4 at x equals 3 over 2.